Hey guys, I want to welcome to Car Styles. And today I want to show you a little technique that I've created to sketch in 3D. Now there's many packages, obviously, to sketch in 3D. Uh, you can do that definitely in Gravity Sketch. Uh, there's Maya, the grease pencil, and what you can use to sketch in 3D. But you can also sketch in 3D inside of ZBrush. But what I'm going to show you today is how to take those initial initial sketches, three-dimensional sketches in ZBrush, and turn them into two-dimensional sketches uh, so that you can sketch over, you can render, and um, do a round circle between your two-dimensional sketches and your three-dimensional sketches, finally coming into a conclusion. So I start this process with some really quick, dirty sculpts. These sculpts can take anywhere from, what, an hour to three hours? It's just about getting the idea down, just enough to begin to draw lines over it. Now, we can generate a lot of these in a very quick time, and that's the beauty of them, because it's not really about the final surfacing. So this is the still the first phase of my model development, which is lock-in, and I've pretty much got the volumes and theoreticals, et cetera, in a relationship that I'm fairly satisfied with. However, to test that out, I am going to sketch over it and look at those lines sort of in sketch form without the volumes. So what I'm doing is taking the poly paint tool or the paintbrush that is, and sketching the theoreticals and the character lines of the model. So here you go. They've pretty much been sketched over the whole model. And now I think I'll just put some indication of a wheel. We'll, there you go. So now um, let's make this look like a sketch. First, let's do a little detail at the top here. And then now I'll make it look like a sketch. And I'm going here and picking out something called a sketch shader. Really, that's a shader that comes with ZBrush. And I've tweaked it a little bit. And now it looks sort of like a sketch, but to really sell it, let's change the background into a totally white background. I'm gonna pick background and documents, hover over the white, and there you have it. Uh, something that looks like a sketch. It's still volumes there, it's still the clay, but it looks like a sketch. And so I'm able to judge it in a way that, uh, in a different way that helps me. So let me put a little bit more detail in here, draw a few more lines on here. And it's almost like you're sketching, feels like you're sketching literally in three dimensions. Of course, there's a surface underneath. Put a line for a backlight, tail lamp, and maybe some exhaust, some detail there at the bottom, lower valence. So now uh, I think I'll just drop in some graphic using the mask line or the mask brush. I'll mask the parts that I want glass and or a darker graphic. I'm using what is called the lasso brush with the with the mask to do that. And now just erasing some parts of the mask. I'll flip the mask right here and then I'll hide the mask. And then going back to the paintbrush, I'll just paint this area in. Now of course I have it on symmetry, so it's going on the other side too. and put a little bit of value, darker value, to give it the added, uh, some added dimension, as if that surface is really popping out. There's really no light shining on the surface, so you don't really get that sensation. So I'm kind of doing it with chalk, if you will, marker, the paint. As I said, this is much like a two-dimensional sketch because there's really no 
value being read in terms of light direction. So I'm kind of inventing it as I go along. Put a little highlight here. Because that's sort of round. And then maybe a highlight for I'll put a highlight for the edge here. Right around that side. Like though. So yeah, I've got the glass there, and then I've done the rear, same way, and I'm going to put some detail here. This is an orthograph ortho, but now I've got it in perspective here. More detail. You just get, give a little bit more indication, that's all. Give it some depth. And now that whole thing is done. So let me just create a layout for maybe some sketchovers. So I'll set this one here. Oh, let me do a little bit of wheel indication too. Same thing that I did, but I'm now just kind of putting some chalk. Okay, so now let's set up a sketch page, if you will. I've duplicated that. Press Shift S. Shift S will sort of stamp that in space. Do another one, Shift S. And then we'll just go ahead and do another one. And another Shift S right here. And we'll save this out. That's it. So really that's, that's the model that we've done. That's the model that I've sketched over, but now there's a different shade over it and I've turned the background back to a gray. So you don't get that sensation that it looks like a sketch, but this in fact is the same model. I had some of the values on that same layer. And what I did was turn some of those dark line values into a mask and then flip the mask and then made it into, or used it to uh, pick some of the geometry. And so now I've got this line work that I can then take it inside of Blender and use it as a guide. You'll see in a second how I've done that. There's that line work, the same sketch lines that we saw inside of ZBrush. Now you can see inside of Blender because that's separate geometry and I can hide the major surfaces and I can just get that separate geometry. This is, this is a really good idea, I think, because not only is it useful inside of Blender, but it's also useful if you wanted to do it inside of Alias, if you wanted to use that as a base for NURB surfacing, that is to kind of create your curve network using that as a guide. Obviously, it wouldn't be perfect. So still inside of Blender, it's time to retope or resurface. And I'm using RetopoFlow, which is a great tool, an add-on for Blender. And uh, this tool allows me to just draw a line, two lines, and then the topology creates automatically is created between those two lines. This now is more traditional where I'm creating topology one at a time. And this is important to be able to do too. And so using those same techniques, I did the whole thing. I'm showing you the whole model. Uh, using that same technique. And those red lines are just creases that I've used to hold those edges so that I can um, work the surface without putting additional edge loops and making it too complex at this point. Um, you can see now there are those reference lines and I'm kind of using those uh, again just kind of judge where my topology is and where I might need to move it.
and there's a back and forth, but it looks fairly good. I'm not necessarily, as I see it in cleaner topology, I'm not necessarily sold on the complete design uh, and we'll continue to work through it, but this is what we have so far. I don't like all the air underneath the vehicle. There's not enough relationship to the ground right now. And I think I'm going to work on that further. The whole idea is that this capsule is held by frames on the top and bottom, as you saw in the sketch earlier, the 3D sketch earlier. So, I have now imported the model inside of Gravity Sketch. Gravity Sketch is a VR tool, and it's really great for really getting in there and understanding the topology because it is in three dimensions and it's a lot better to, it's a lot easier to really see how your topology is flowing and, and see very clearly how you might execute a particular form. And so you can see the rear end is shaping up here. And uh, yeah, I was able to really close a lot of holes and get it right. And so now it's back into Blender and it's all tight. And I think headed in the right direction now with a little shader, metallic shader and some experimental colors. I'm not sure if these are going to be the colors, but yeah, it's moving along. Hey guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Be sure to check back with me later as I will take a deeper dive into Alias Sub D along with other tools to create and develop wheels and tires and an interior for the model that you've seen me build and or models that you've seen me build in this particular video. So if you haven't already, like and subscribe and I'll see you later.